What's up everyone, back for another beer review, and today I'll be reviewing yet another beer from Hot Butcher for the World, and they're out of Chicago, Illinois, and this is their cold pizza. So they're calling this one a Citra and Vic Secret Hopped Cold IPA that comes in a 6% alcohol by volume. No IBUs, listen, time of review. This can is just over one month old. I'm gonna give a huge thanks, shout out once again to Hot Butcher for this can, so big thanks to them. In the description box, I'll post a link to the beer mail video I did that contains all the goodies they hooked me up with, and uh, we have another cold IPA here. Now, I have reviewed a handful over the past, I'd say six months or so, very interesting style. One of the first cold IPAs I had, maybe the first, was uh, Hot Butcher's Deep Rinse. Uh, it was about maybe two, two and a half years ago, and it was uh, pretty tasty. Um, like I said, it's an interesting style. I see a lot more breweries brewing them uh, currently. And this one is with Citra and Vic Secret. Now, they have a bunch of different uh, pizza-themed beers. They have a Tavern Cut and a Deeper Dish, and both of those beers use the Citra and Vic Secret hop combo. But I don't think this is going to taste anything like those, only because... Those were uh, hazy double IPAs, or it was a hazy double IPA and a hazy triple IPA, respectively. They were both very delicious. I just think this is going to be a bit different in terms of the characters. We will see. So, you know, it's going to have that clarity that you get from cold IPAs, very akin to like older school West Coast style IPAs and American IPAs in general. Do something like that. And uh, yeah, I'm really uh, excited to see what they have to offer with this one. So yeah, as you can see, it's not crystal clear, but it's close. Uh, maybe a little bit of haze, like gentle haze, but it's pretty clear on camera. It's probably gonna look clearer than it does in person. Um, has about a finger of a soap sudsy, uh, bright white colored head, a lot of carbonation. I think this has the etching at the bottom. I always forget if it does, but I'm pretty sure based on what you're seeing, I don't know if you actually see the carbonation, but there's a big stream of carbonation rising. So yeah, it looks great too in the hot butcher glass. It looks like a proper old school uh, IPA of some sort. Let's get a nose. Very nice. Oh, so there's a lot of citrus. It's pithy, it's zesty, but it also has a juicy tinge to it. It's orange, it's uh, tangerine, tangelo. Not quite grapefruit, more to the orange side of things. Yeah, like freshly squeezed OJ, but like with a bunch of pulp in it. There's also a little bit of like a underripened white peach, I would say, maybe mango. And then maybe, <laughs> this is gonna sound weird, but maybe like a tart pineapple. So a lot of times when I say pineapple, I say sweet, overripened, I say crushed, right? Sweeter pineapple. This has more like a tart, like underripened kind of pineapple. And then the finish uh, on the aroma, like the last thing that hits me is this uh, resinous kind of piney, like floral-esque kind of feeling. Definitely old school. But yeah, I would say piney and floral. It smells really refreshing, but I feel like it's going to have a decent, like, moderate blast of um, bitterness to it. So let's get into it. Cheers, everybody. Thanks again to Hot Butcher. Wow. Interesting. Very interesting off that first sip. I'll tell you right now, the nose. Complete 180 what happened here in the taste. The nose was screaming, again, juicy, sweeter citrus with like a little bit of a, um, a zesty kind of rindy feel. It was more fruity. Let's just say, say fruity as opposed to anything else. In the taste, it's not as fruit forward as the nose would indi it was indicating. Let's get a uh, body and mouthfeel first. Mine's like lower side of medium, approaching medium, 6%, it's fine. The mouthfeel, this is an old school mouthfeel. Uh, very effervescent. It's crisp on the palate. It has a kind of a clean kind of finish to it as well. Uh, very refreshing, spritzy. Um, pretty decent carbonation to this one. The taste, right at the forefront, I'm actually getting a lot of grapefruit and a lot of like orange and tangerine, but it's the rind, it's the pith, has a bitterness to it. Um, again, like an orange zest, something something along those lines where in the nose, I was getting that, don't get me wrong, but then I was getting this, I said OJ with like pulp in it. It doesn't have the sweetness that the uh, citrus fruit would provide typically in a lot of these uh, hop forward beers. I get a little bit of that tart pineapple and uh, underripened white peach midway through the palate. And then... Um, about halfway to maybe two thirds away through the palate, that big resinous pine floral bitterness hits. This to me, 
kind of shocking the palate because it's pretty bitter. It's actually one of the most bitter beers I've had from Hot Butcher in a hot minute. This is like moderately to full-on bitter to my palate. It finishes semi-dry, but like again, a big bitterness. And it's again, a resinous pine floral-esque bitterness. It's it's pretty good overall, but I think the deep rinse that I had a couple years ago from them was better, and a lot of the cold IPAs I've had recently are better than this. Um, I think if the nose would have carried over, here's the thing. I like that bitterness, right? I'm somebody who, when I first got into beer, I did not, don't don't come to me with any kind of bitterness, right? This is, I'm talking like 9, 10, 11, 12 years ago. Now I welcome it to my palate. If you watch the channel, you know, during a lot of reviews, I'll say, hey, I wish this beer had some kind of bitterness to balance it out. It's too sweet. I need something to kind of, uh, you know, tone down the sweetness a lot of times, especially in hazy IPAs. I feel like a lot of New England style and hazy IPAs lean a little bit too sweet at this point for me. This though is in the opposite direction where, I don't know. I just feel like there's this moderate to full bitterness, but there's not a lot of like malt sweetness because it's only 6%. And to begin with, a lot of the fruits are more citrus and like under ripened kind of fruit feel where it's not like that sweet, like over ripened honeydew or mango or something. It's just, it's, it needs something to bitter, uh, balance it out. And what it needs is a little bit more sweetness. There's an underlying kind of like bready malt sensation, but again, it's not really that sweet. So this is like one of the most bitter hop but uh hop butcher beers i've had maybe ever but it's also not one of my favorite um it's not bad at all like it's still good and drinkable and i'll finish the rest of this glass and um I'm, there's gonna be a lot of folks out there that i think really like this because of the bitterness for me i'm that guy that needs balance now like i don't mind the bitterness level to this if there's a sweetness to kind of balance it out it's kind of lacking in that so um cold pizza from hop butcher for me, I'm going to have to give this a low uh, 3.75 out of 5. I'm going to go 3.65 out of 5. That's what I'm going to go for this beer. Um, again, I got to be you know honest with my rating, and a 3.65 is kind of what I'm feeling right now. I was hoping for a little bit more out of this for me personally. Now, again, I I'm sure a lot of folks out there have enjoyed this one. Just within the style for me, this is probably one of my least favorite that I've tried so far. So uh, tasting notes. Um Orange zest. I said orange zest, orange pith, orange rind. Again, it's not, it doesn't have a lot of like sweet orange in the taste that was more in the nose. Uh, dried mango. Dried mango? I'm getting more like peach as a, as a, like a stone fruit is concerned. Again, under ripened peach. Dried mango, not really giving. Uh, juicy pineapple. I said tart pineapple. Not really juicy. It's not really sweet for me. It's more tart. So I agree with the pineapple. More tart for me. Agree with the orange zest for sure. And the dried mango, I'm not really picking up on. So didn't really nail those tasting notes. Um, price point availability. Anybody out there, I don't know what you're paying for a uh, cold IP in the Chicago land area. I would hope like $13, $14 a four pack for this. Um, if this makes distro, you're probably talking $16 to $18 a four pack. Uh, obviously, I they sent it to me. If, you know, it, it, I didn't pay for it, um, but I would not rebuy this one again. Or if I did, I'd buy a single can just to see if, you know, maybe this is, I want to say, because they released this before, I'm not going to say this is a bad batch because we all have different palettes. To me, it's not resonating with my palette as much as maybe yours. Um, but I would try this again just to see if I get a different feel to it. Um, but it's just, it's not one of my favorite hot butcher beers. Certainly not one of my favorite, like lower ABV uh, hot butcher beers. And availability is hot butcher you can find them if you really want to here in the U.S. You might have to order it off a website or, you know, hope that maybe um, a beer like this gets distro to you. doesn't happen all the time. Here in Buffalo, New York, we get like a drop of their stuff every four to six weeks. So it is what it is. Anyway, if you've had this one before, post in the comment section. Let me know what you think about this one. Again, not one of my favorite from them. 3.65 out of 5. Probably like the bottom five to seven ratings that I've given a hot butcher beer. Uh, but you got to be honest with your ratings and uh, you know how you feel about a beer. And again, this is one that I would probably not drink again unless someone handed it to me if I was somewhere or uh, I wanted to buy a can just to kind of revisit it and see if I have a different feeling about it. Oh yeah, 6%. Yeah, you really can't tell because you shouldn't. And again, with these cold IPAs, you know, a lot of times uh, they use a lager yeast. Um, maybe they lager. There's a, it's a very... <laughs> It's a fine line like of definition between like this and an IPL. So many people say this is not an IPL. This is like a crisp West Coast IPA. This, to be honest with you, this doesn't have a lot of, to me, lager kind of qualities to it. 
Like some of the other ones I could tell, okay, that, that kind of drinks like almost like an IPA, even though it's technically not. This just seems like an old school kind of American IPA to me. So it is what it is. Anyway, thanks to Hot Butcher for sending this one for me to try. Wish I would have uh, enjoyed it a little bit more, but it is what it is. And uh, appreciate it by stopping by for another beer review here on the Beer Patrol to the next one. Cheers.